Hello, 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 and welcome. My name is Eamon Killian. I've been doing a short set of tutorials on how to get used to using IBM software. Continuing the sequence is tutorial 24, where we're going to dive back into something a little bit more complex, and one of the complex machines that you can actually get within the IBM software cloud is the Citrix Netscaler VPX. And the Citrix Netscaler itself is ostensibly a load balancer. Uh, it can be an application gateway as well, but it is, for this purposes of this video, we're using it as a load balancer. And I sat back and thought, how do I go about organizing this video? How do I get into the subject of the Citrix Netscaler? And it struck me that there may be viewers who are less familiar with the concepts of load balancing. So in the first part here, we will be covering why you would use a Netscaler device and what indeed it does. So for those well familiar with load balancing and round robin and lease connections and all those good things that load balancers do, please feel free to skip forward to somewhere around minute eight, I think, of this video, where we get into ordering the actual Netscaler. For those of you unfamiliar, well, or perhaps you're familiar, but you just want to cover it off in terms of knowing why you would use it within IBM software and where it fits within IBM software, then stick with it. It's only eight minutes and I will try and do justice to a huge area of web service infrastructure in seven minutes. So here we go. Brief introduction to load balancing. Out in the World Wide Web, we have our users and those end users will use a browser. And in that browser, they will type in a HTTP address, something like HTTP colon colon slash slash www.somebusiness.com. That will then go to DNS. DNS will use an A record or C name or some sort of conversion to convert that from that usable, human, knowledgeable, human readable address www.somebusiness, or in this example here, yourname.com, into an IP address. And that IP address will be a static or a fixed IP address, which will send your traffic from your browser to that IP address through the interweb. In our case, that will head to software. And that traffic will arrive at software and within software, we will be setting up our web service. So, I will set up a private only network, secure network within software with my web servers. And I will start putting in private virtual machines or private bare metal machines, and they will have a private IP address. Now, I keep saying the word private there because I want to emphasize that this network is non-accessible to the outside world. Even though you've got the IP address, that's not this IP address. It cannot get from this red network to this blue network. It is not allowed at all. So I will build up my web service, and we've covered building a web server on software, but we had a public address. This is all about highly secure. So this network, just to emphasize, is a private network unknown to the outside world. And in software, that will exist as your VLAN within software. So you will request a VLAN and you will put your services on there or indeed the VLAN comes with the VPX. So your web servers, you'll want some sort of availability, high availability. Why would you have only one web server? Because if your web server goes down, then you need to have a backup just in case. Now, I've shown an example of two here. This could be three, four, hundreds, even thousands of web servers if you're a very popular site. So you have your web service. Maybe it's a, an eShop. Maybe it's a, 
um, an application that you are distributing to customers so that they can come in. Maybe it's an accounting application, something like that. So whether you're a bookshop or an accounting application, you would want that service to be highly available. This is where the NetScaler comes in, because by putting in the NetScaler, we can now load balance the traffic coming in. The most popular method is to load balance using round robin, but it could be lease connection. And I'll explain what those are in a second. Our NetScaler will have a public virtual IP, which is the IP of the service. So this DNS record will resolve to the service IP address, and the service IP address will allow you to traverse through the public side of the VPX into the private networks. Whoops into the private networks, as you can see here. And it will load balance. And I mentioned two types of load balancing. One is round robbing. And that would mean that the traffic would come through and go to this one first. The next request would go to this one. The next request would go back to this one. And so on. Round robin. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Another way of doing load balancing would be lease connection. Lease connection would be when you have, like I mentioned, an e-shop and people log in and they maintain a basket of goods. So you want their connection, their session, to exist on the same web server or else the basket will get all corrupted and they won't know where they are. So in that instance, people will log in and they'll stick with this one. So the least connection would be the machine with less connections, as it says, least connection. So there we are. That, that would be where your Citrix NetScaler would sit, where your private web services sit within a software environment. Here it all is. But of course, looking at this environment, we went to all the hard work of having dual websites or multiple websites. We can do the same for the VPX as well, we can have a highly available pair or a high availability pair. So we can put two of them in. The one service I want to emphasize, the one service or VIP will address both of these machines. So they will work in concert. One of them usually set up as a primary and the other one in backup mode taking over just in case but there are configurations where you can have them both working simultaneously. So now we have a highly available, highly secure web services environment configured within software. Why have one of them? You could be a very popular company, a very popular website. You may be a very large company that have multiple different applications that you want to provide out on the web. And again, the Citrix NetScaler can do that. It will sit nicely in front of all of your web services and it will load balance across the web services and load balance within those web services. So that's another example of a larger configuration. You're not fixed with just one web service. You can have many. In that instance, you would have multiple VIPs services available and you would have multiple DNS records out in the World Wide Web. So you, you might have your name one, your name two, your name three. And that will then come to your NetScaler and your NetScaler will load balance within that web service. So that pretty much gives a very high level, I think in six minutes there, introduction to load balancing and why you would use it and how it will fit within your software environment. So what are we gonna to do today? Well, we can't really set all of this up. It would be a very long video. So we wanna strip it back. And we wanna strip it back to the bare bones so that you understand and you can get an understanding from this video 
of how to get your Citrix Netscaler VPX working. So what are we going to do? Well, we, as it says here, we're going to order the Netscaler. We're going to create two new software virtual machines. And I'm going to use Windows 2012 R2 because I'm concerned that these videos are becoming too Linuxy. Um, so my thanks to the Win Wizard Rob Garrett for pointing out that I should use more Windows. So I have done this time. We're going to install web services on those two Windows machines. And then I'm going to modify the IIS start files so that the default background on our web server one, let's call it, is going to be red and our web server two is going to be green. And this way we can visually see that the load balancing is working. So if you're using Chrome, you'll be able to hold the shift key down and go refresh, refresh, refresh on the page and it will round robin as we expect it to do between red, green, red, green, red, green. We're going to configure an actual VPX to load balance across these two web servers and then we're going to test it out. As I said, we're going to go in and refresh the page to see it going back and forth. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's dive in and get it done. So here we are, we're all logged into the portal and we're going to get going on ordering our new Netscaler. So we have our order elements here, or indeed you could go up to these drop downs, but here's our order elements. So we need a Citrix Netscaler VPX device. So shall we go to, no, don't go to devices. You don't order the Netscaler from devices. It is a network piece of kit. So you get a network. So we click on network and that will bring up our order page. And lo and behold, we have straight away on the left hand side here, the number one element is our Citrix Netscaler VPX. So we'll be ordering one of these. So you click on order. I'll take a couple of seconds now. I am going to be ordering this in Paris for this particular implementation. So there is Paris. Which one of the Netscalers am I going to hire? Am I going to rent per month? Well, you get lots and lots of choice. Um, I'm actually going to go for the top end. I'm going to go for a gigabits per second, platinum licensed edition. If you want to read more about what you get and don't get, from the particular editions. Obviously Citrix's website can cover that uh, in much more detail than I ever could. But basically we are gonna order the top end one here. Now you get to choose, well, static IP addresses. Static IP address, what, what are these? What, what, why is it asking me to choose a static IP? Well, if you remember in the introduction, we said that the DNS would have to resolve to an IP address and that IP address should be a static or a secure single always there IP address and that's what this is asking. How many of these IP addresses do I want? Well how many websites am I running? How many eShops? How many back-end services? And depending on how many of those you may want to have 16 of them, you may want to have 8 etc. Well for our example we're just having one but that's what it's asking for how many of these static public IP addresses you want to have. So we hit continue. Now you have to fill in the Aaron. Uh, this is from RFC 2050. It always asks these questions. So basically you just put in what this is going to be. I'm just going to fill this in. Okay, and you agree. So once you filled in your Aaron, it will then say what back-end virtual local area network you want to have this on. Now I'm going to be covering the way in which 
software provide the VLANs in much more detail in a subsequent video, but I've already set up my VLANs and I will be able to see the list of back-end VLANs that are available for me to use. And I've named those already to make it much more easy for me to understand. So we're going to have a private back-end on my DMZ because my Netscaler is effectively going to be in and creating for me my demilitarized zone. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when I went through the introduction again, we're traversing from public to private. So the zone or the VLAN that I'm doing this in is my DMZ VLAN. So the front end, no surprise, I'm going to have this on the public DMZ and the back end will be on the private DMZ. Like I say, I'll be covering this in much more detail, but it's well worth you knowing that it will be asking you what networks you want to put your VPX on. Now, once that's done, we just place the order. I think it will ask me to say yes, place the order. And that's our Netscaler order. So join me in a second when that's all up and running and we will dive in and start configuring our Netscaler.